At the start of the year, we decided to review our coverage of geostrategically important sites uh, around the world using satellite imagery analysis. And Saudi Arabia is a country that we haven't actually covered for quite some time, so we tasked one of our satellite imagery analysts to take a look. Uh, and it turned out that he identified a previously undisclosed ballistic missile site. Uh, this is located about 200 kilometers southwest of Riyadh, uh, at the, goes by the name of Al Wata. Uh, and this is in addition to two ballistic missile sites that had already been previously identified in Saudi Arabia uh, at Al Jufaya and Al Sulail. The interest in the new site at uh, Al Wata is that it potentially could be an overspill site for some of Saudi Arabia's Chinese-made DF-3 missiles. Now, these missiles are a fairly old variant. They're a fairly inaccurate missile, um, and potentially not necessarily the most useful missile for carrying a conventional warhead. So there has been some supposition that Saudi Arabia could be seeking the possibility of acquiring nuclear weapons in the future, to counter the threat which is posed by Iran. Now, our analysis of the site at Al-Wata appears to bear this out to some extent, given that there are two launch pads for the ballistic missiles at Al-Wata. One is oriented towards Iran, towards Tehran, and one is oriented towards Tel Aviv in Israel, both of whom uh, are countries with whom, obviously, Saudi Arabia enjoys fairly difficult diplomatic relationships. So therefore, our assessment was that potentially this could be indicative of an increase in the, the, the ballistic missile capability of Saudi Arabia. And what we now need to do is watch very carefully to see whether Saudi Arabia moves to acquire nuclear weapons in the future. Interestingly, this coincides now with some reporting which has been on the BBC, which suggests that actually Pakistan might be in a position to supply Saudi Arabia with nuclear weapons, should it so desire. So the interest here for us is that we ran this story back in August in, in Jane's intelligence review, pointing to the actual existence of this previously undisclosed site. Uh, and then subsequently, this has now emerged in the mainstream press as an issue of, of particular, uh, particular interest. The issue with discovering sites such as this is that we have to bear in mind the, the, the implications, the geostrategic implications behind it. The possibility exists, of course, and I think it's entirely, entirely feasible, that Saudi Arabia actually wanted these sites to be discovered. Saudi Arabia would be aware that there are satellite passes above its territory uh, and that eventually, potentially, somebody would pick this up. Hence, the two actual launch pads and the particular markings on them could have been intended to give a message to its neighbours and its rivals, uh, that's to say Iran and Israel. So we do have to be cognizant of that as a potential explanation for, for how this came about. I think the feature that we ran back in August demonstrates quite well uh, the capabilities that we have at IHS Jane's, in particular our access to satellite imagery. Obviously, with satellite imagery, we have access to stocks of historical data. We're able to task satellites to actually visit particular places if we have the coordinates. So if we actually have a lead, we can, we can attempt to have a look at that actual site. Uh, and that's then melded with the expertise that we have in the form of in-house imagery analysts who are able to pretty quickly turn around an assessment and give us their view of what they're actually looking at. So this all plays into the continuous rolling program we have of looking at sites of, of key geostrategic interest. Uh, obviously, Iran, North Korea, these are two countries whose programs we follow very closely because of counter-proliferation issues. And over and above that, we can then go and look at countries if a particular issue emerges. Uh, within Iran recently, on top of the piece that we did in Saudi Arabia, uh, we were able to identify a site within Iran which had previously been thought to be linked to their space program, but actually we assessed was probably part of their ballistic missile program. Uh, we've identified training areas for Hezbollah within Lebanon as well. Um, and going forward, that's the sort of, uh, those are the sort of areas that we'll be looking to cover in the future as well. This is all part of the, the open source intelligence that we're able to, to access. And alongside that, we can then call upon in-house country risk analysts who can provide strategic intelligence on top of the uh, satellite imagery to situate everything within its context.